us stand for the reading of the scripture and let's look in, into studying God's word. Coming from Romans chapter 8, verse 13. It says, for if, say if, yes. if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if, say if again, yes. by the spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We thank God for the reading, hearing, and most importantly, God is interested in the doing of his holy word. For subject on this morning, the Christian's inner struggle. The Christian's inner struggle. Inner struggle. Inner struggle. And that's no secret. Many people don't come to the church because they say, I got to get myself together first. They say, Rev, when I get myself together, I'm going to come over to the church. Well, I guess you'll never come to the church because I've been in the church for a long time and I ain't together yet. Do I have a witness in here? How many of you are honest to admit that you're not fully where you need to be? You've been coming to church. Some of you come to Sunday school. Many of you come to Bible class. I know you pray every day, but you still have to admit that there's a struggle going on. So in this text and in our study on this morning, we need to be enlightened as to what this struggle is all about and how do we handle it? How should we feel about this particular struggle, this inner struggle that we have? Now, you don't have to admit uh, that you are a sinner. I read enough Bible to already know that you are. The scripture said all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So it, I don't need to know all of your personal business, where your weaknesses are. I'm dealing with my own. I have enough inner struggle for myself. All I am to do is to encourage you in the word of God. So let's look at our uh, text on this morning as we look at Paul's honesty. I thought Reverend Carl was hiding my computer from me for a minute. All right, we're looking at Paul's honesty. Paul wrote most of the New Testament Bible. But he had to admit, this is Paul speaking here at Romans 7.15. He says, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. How many of y'all can agree with Paul? Come on, just be honest this morning. The very thing you say you're not going to do. I, I don't understand me. I, I mean, my mind is telling me to do one thing, but I end up doing something else. So Paul is just being honest on this morning. So I ask you a question, my brothers and sisters. As a Christian, do you two have two natures? Is something going on inside of you? Is it just the pastor struggling with this thing? Or do you have the same problem I have? Now, I'm just honestly asking you because some of you look so good as being a Christian. I, I, sometimes I feel like I'm struggling all by myself. And, and I feel awful about this inner struggle that I face. Some of you uh, just look like the best Christian in the world. Yeah. Brother James was talking about, uh, he went to a, a church and he, uh, there was a brother that he really admired and he looked up to this brother and he said this brother uh, happened to speak at this particular event he was at and he was so surprised at the things this brother shared with the group. You know, a lot of problems in the church People call us 
all kinds of names because we're just not honest sometimes. You know, we want to deceive people as if we've been good all our lives. And, and you know, people uh, just find that hard to believe because if you're a human, you struggle as it is. Just being a human, uh, we struggle with temptation from every way. Do I have a witness in here? So Paul's answer uh, is uh, at verse 21, he says, so I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. Every time I attempt to do good, when I make up my mind, yeah. Yeah. I'm doing good from this day forward. That very hour, temptation begins to mess with me. Do I have a witness in here? So Paul is dealing with this thing, this two natures. Uh, and we have two natures within us, both struggling for master. Well, let me ask you, which nature is winning in your life? Which one is the master and the other the slave? Is your Adamic nature still in charge? Or is your new nature running the show. My brothers and sisters, this is very, very important that we understand that there's a war going on within the believer. Sometimes we're more concerned about the crime in our community, the problems throughout the world, but how many of us understand that we ought to focus some of our time on the war that's going on in the Every time, my brothers, you look out the window and lust after somebody else's wife. That's a war. That's an attack going on within you. Because if you are born of God, the Holy Spirit will immediately convict you of your wrong. And you will find yourself depressed by your weakness. Do I have a few people? Do I have a few women that lust after items that you can't afford? Uh, you, 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 some, some women say, I don't lust after men, Reverend. Well, I don't know. 2017, all kind of stuff is going on. But there are some weaknesses in all of us. Paul said in Romans 7, 23, he said, but I see another law at work in me waging war against the law of my mind. All of the stuff I studied in Bible class, all of the lessons I've learned in Sunday school, everything I know from the word of God, there's something waging war against what I know. Is anyone in here guilty of doing something you know was wrong? I mean, it wasn't like you were ignorant. I mean, you knew that this thing you were about to do displeases God, but you did it anyway. Do I have a few people struggling in here? War raging in my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work. Where is it? In me. I don't have time to judge your battle. Somebody all in somebody else's business. Do I have a witness? Somebody always worrying about what somebody else doing, but what's going on in the inside of you? So let's uh, wrap this study up into one theme. The struggle within. The struggle, where is it, church? Within. The struggle in me. Yeah. It's in me. The senior pastor of Pleasant Valley Missionary Baptist Church is struggling. 
struggling. I wonder if the members are struggling. I wonder uh, if you are struggling and what do we do about this? Well, let's look at seven quick things. First, write this down. First of all, let's admit it's an intense spiritual battle. It's intense. It's intense. Over in Ephesians 6 and 12, Paul says, For our struggle, my brothers and sisters, is not against flesh and blood. Now, two things we can gather here. First of all, my struggle is not with you. My struggle is not with you. It's not against people. We, we love to point fingers. And I'm struggling because of him. I'm struggling because of her. Well, first of all, it's not because of you. No, no. That, that's, uh, my struggle is not against flesh and blood. Secondly, it's not against my body. Uh, a lot of times we like to blame the body. We said this body of mine is causing me to struggle. Well, it's not your body. It's not flesh and blood at all. Your body only obeys what it's told to do. If your body begins to operate on its own, you might need to see a doctor. You might have had a stroke or something. If your body just walks in Walmart and begins picking up items and your mind is not, I mean, it's just doing it on its own and walk out the front door, and, and that was just your body. I mean, you had nothing to do with it. You just went in and picked up a pack of pork chops and just walked out the front door, and you didn't even know you did it. You get to the car, and you say, where did these pork chops come from? You might need to see a medical. Yeah. Do I have a witness in here? So the, the, it's not the body. It's something else. See, it's against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Tell your neighbor it's a spiritual battle. It's spiritual. It's, it's this nature that lives inside of my body. This natural thing that I was born with. David said I was born and shaped in iniquity. If any of you know anything about children, you don't have to teach children how to lie. They, they come here knowing how to lie. They, they have lying down. And they rather tell you a lie versus the truth. Do I have a witness in here? And some of you have grown up lying and you just love the lie. It's a natural thing. You don't have to tell a baby to eat. It's natural. And some of you have taken this eating thing to a whole nother level. Do I have a witness? The body said, I'm full. But you say, you're going to eat all of this pie. That's that nature talking. That ain't the body. The body begins to hurt a matter of fact. It begins to choke up, but you keep putting pie. Yeah. Do I have two witnesses? Uh, look, I know what I'm talking about because uh, one cup of bluebell didn't do me no good. My body was full now, but the taste of bluebell just did me wonders. It was like a cigarette for those of you who smoke. I would just have to smoke a pack in the evening. A, a, a chain smoker I was yeah. with a spoon and bluebell. It wasn't my body. My body was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Even my clothes tried to talk to me. Do I have a witness? My clothes were saying, this is too tight. Yeah. But I kept on smoking bluebell. Do I have a witness out here? Anybody got a smoking problem? 
Somebody say, Reverend, I thought that was only with cigarettes. No. It's a spiritual thing. So there are, admittingly, external spiritual forces that are at work in this world, seeking to keep us from God and his will. There's television. There's media. There's family members. There's friends. There's always somebody trying to keep you from God. Some of your best friends try to lure you away from the very person you need the most. They try to pull you away from God. So there are some external spiritual forces. But look at note number two. Often, if you are honest, it is our own sinful nature that is at work within us. We love to blame other people, but we have to learn to be honest before God can help us. We've got to come to the fact that it is me that is causing most of my problems. The situation I'm in right now is because of me. I'm the problem. Let's go on to number two. So we have to admit that I have a personal struggle. A personal. I do. I do. Now somebody's going to leave church today and say, yo, my pastor's struggling bad. He's struggling. But listen, you need to look at yourself. Do I have a witness? Before God can help you, you got to learn to be honest. I got a problem with my tongue. I always say the wrong thing. I, I, I got a problem with my tongue. The wrong kind of word. Slip out of my mouth. I know what the word says about that type of language. I've studied what the word says, but it comes out. Look at 17. It says, for the flesh, talking about that nature, not the body, desires what is contrary to the spirit. And the spirit, what is contrary to the flesh. I'm talking about your spirit. Your spirit that was quickened by the Holy Spirit. That your spirit that has been born again. That one that communicates with the spirit of God on the inside is at war against your very nature. They are, look at the rest of that text, they are in conflict with each other. Right here. So that you are not to do whatever you want. How many of you are really, really, really trying to be a Christian? How many of you really working on it? Now, some of y'all ain't even trying. Some of y'all have made up your mind like, man, if it feel good, do it. It must be right. See, Rev, that's just the way I feel. Well, we're going to look at that a little bit. We're going to see what uh, just, just giving in will end up in, in a certain way. Y'all got number two? So it's a what kind of struggle? What kind of struggle, church? Personal, personal. All right, look at number three. So let's look at me, the law, and my sin. Let's look at me. This is a type of sermon you can't leave, you can't look around the room today. I know on some sermons y'all look around and say, mm-hmm, that's just what she doing. But today, this one is for me. So I'm looking at me, and when I say the law, I'm talking about God's law and my sin. See, Paul wrote, he said, what shall we say then? 
Is the law sinful? I got a problem, Reverend Carl, uh -huh. with God's law. Uh -huh. Now, I don't tell everybody this because I'm a pastor, but I'm going to share this with y'all. I got a problem with the Bible. He says, certainly not, nevertheless, I would not have known what sin was had it not been for the law. I wouldn't be struggling right now. I wouldn't be having this problem if I'd have never read the Bible. time I pick the Bible up, something wrong with me. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? See, that's why some of y'all never pick it up. Listen to me. If you thought you were very, very ugly, you wouldn't spend much time in the mirror. It's the pretty folk who are in the mirror all the time. Yeah, well, that's all matter, Brother Paul. What you think? When you look in the Word of God, it's like looking in the spiritual mirror. How many of y'all fall short every time? There's something always out of line every time I read the Scripture. So I got a problem with it. Pastor Paul said, is the law sinful? He asking, is God's law sinful? What kind of question is this? Is the Bible sinful? The Bible is causing me all these headaches. Uh -huh. For I would not have known what coveting really was if the law had not said, you shall not covet. I thought coveting was a natural thing. I mean, you bought that new car and I want it. What's wrong with that? Isn't that natural for me to feel that way? You bought a new house and I want it. That's natural. That just comes up in me. This ought to be mine. But the Bible says that kind of thinking is wrong. Man, I can't cover it. It's so easy to do. I don't have no witnesses in it. Look at verse 8, he says, but sin, look at sin, seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment, producing me every kind of coveting. Now, I only coveted after people's automobiles. Now I find that no, I was coveting after people's jobs. I wanted their job. I, I didn't realize I was doing it until I read the Bible. The Bible done messed me up. I can't rest with myself no more. Now I know just how terrible I really am. For apart from the law, sin was dead. I went to the club. I parted to the next morning. Wasn't no problem. But I read that, that spirit of lasciviousness. Yes. Now the party can't be fun no more. The music used to bump real good. Now it's working on my nerves. What done happened to me since I picked up the Bible? The Bible done messed my life up. The only place I feel good now is at the church. Do I have any witnesses up there? Do y'all agree with Paul? Y'all see what Paul is saying here? He done messed up my life. Took my groove out. Took my cool away. I was cool. I had a certain walk. Now I feel dumb walking like that. Do y'all hear me talking? The, the word have messed me up. So what have you become keenly aware of 
since studying the word. I'll put a checklist on there for you. Maybe you can check some of them. You might not be on there. Sexual sin, don't none of y'all check that one. You're going to have a problem when you get home. I don't check it. Reverend Carl said, put two checks right there to be fine. Pride, is that yours? Yeah, yeah. Check off yours. Uh, is it gluttony? Y'all check for your pastor right there. Check. Put three checks for the pastor right there. What about laziness? I didn't know laziness was a sin. I was just resting. I like rest. I didn't know that was lazy. The Bible have messed my sleep up now. The Lord said, that's enough sleep. Get up and study. But the pillow feels to get up. Study. A fight going on now. Nature saying, man, go back to sleep. The spirit saying, get up. You got to go to the church. The nature say, man, you spend enough time at the church. You need to rest. The spirit say, get up and do my bidding. So you get up doing all this. Anger. Check it off. Y'all live in New Orleans. That's automatic with New Orleans. If you live here, check it off. Now, you might have to write yours in. Or um, maybe you need a spare sheet of paper. Your list might be pretty long. You might have to write on the front and the back. But you need to be honest with yourself. You should have become keenly aware of some sin in your life. If you're serious about the word of God, it is a mirror and you ought to see yourself for how you truly are. I don't have a witness on. So I don't blame you. I know you don't want witness on this one, but go ahead. Look at number four. So what is now my attitude? The scripture gives us our attitude. Isn't that something? The Lord gives you the facts, and he gives you your opinion. He said, if I want your opinion, I'll give it to you. So here's your attitude. He don't give you a chance to answer, Brother James, because your attitude may come from the wrong side of yourself. So here's your attitude. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us, this is our attitude, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run, how church, with perseverance the race marked out for us. We got to stay on target. And our sins of the nature slow us down. We got to get rid of them. We got to get rid of them. So our attitude is to get rid of them. Tell your neighbor you got to get rid of them now. You got to get. You got to let it go. You got to let it go. You got to agree with God's word. You got to look in the mirror of God's word and say, "Yes, this is the truth." I joke with some ministers. I say, uh, the way some of our young people wear their hair nowadays. They must not have mirrors at their house. No, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to joke here. I'm serious because uh, I know it's just a style. It's called messed up head. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I guess that's what it's called. It's called mess up my hair and go outside. Because they hella like this. Y'all know what I'm talking about? That's how I look. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Like this? It's like they didn't comb it. I mean, it looked like I didn't comb it. Right? We used to look in the mirror to try to get it even and, you know, make it look like we groomed it. But today is mess it up. All right? And so I guess that's the style today. And some of us look in the mirror of God's word the same way. We don't, we're not honest to what it's saying. The Bible's saying your life is messed up. And we see my life is all right. The word says I'm all right. That ain't the word. No, wait a minute. What, what chapter are you reading? Look at me now. It says, 
For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin. Where? At work in me. What a wretched man I am. Now listen to me. You got to get here. If you never get here, God can't save you. You got to admit that you are in a mess. I mean, based on God's word. Now, don't look at me and compare your life. Don't, don't look at Vonador and say, well, compared to Vonador, I ain't doing that bad. You're right. But I'm not the standard by which you go by. Okay, you need God's word. You, you put your life next to God's word and you will realize like Paul did. He said, what a wretched man I am. Then he's got a serious question here. Who? Not what. Look at it with me. Who will rescue me? Put that up so they can see it. Who? Tell your neighbor it's a who. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? In other words, if I continue this path, it's going to lead me to eternal death. Now, I need you to catch that. Somebody say, everybody died. Well, God ain't that excited about that. God, God, God ain't moved like we are when someone physically dies because it means nothing to him. So you see, he has power to tell a dead thing to get up. So he's not moved. Uh, uh, you remember when Lazarus died, he took his time. Lazarus was sick, and he took his time, and Lazarus died, and he was in the grave. It didn't move Jesus that much because he told Mary, I am the resurrection. So this type of debt we're talking about in this passage is more than that mere physical debt. We're talking about eternal separation from God. And on this path, as I look at the word and I look at myself, I'm on my way to hell. Just being me. Just being me. Who? Who's going to get me out of this? Let's see what he has to say. Look at 25. Fifth. The truth, Jesus, the answer. I don't care what the world tells you. The truth is what you need, first of all. The truth is Jesus. Jesus said, I am the truth. I, I want to know what's true. Jesus said, just knowing me, all that other truth you need to know, I'll take care of that. The first truth. Come on now. The first truth you need to be introduced to is Jesus. I'll handle life and all other circumstances. First, Jesus, because he is the answer. Yeah. Somebody said, no, Pastor, Alan Iverson is the answer. No. No. He can just shoot basketball. Do I have a witness? That's all he can do. But he need the truth himself. Alan Iverson need to meet Jesus. I think he already has. Look at 25. Thanks be to God who delivers me. Now tell your neighbor, listen, you need to be delivered. Because, see, you can take this sermon and say, well, I'm struggling. That's just me, you know. Sometimes I'm a fall. Sometimes I'll do good. That's not what Paul is saying. Paul said, I was delivered from this. This weakness, this struggling I have, I have someone to deliver me. He can take my weakness and strengthen me. He can take cussing 
out of my mouth. How many of you have been a Christian long enough to, say, to know that I'm nowhere near what I used to be? How many of y'all been a Christian long enough to say, man, you should have met me when I first became a Christian. I was a mess. Now, if you've been a mess for 50 years, something is wrong. Something's wrong. If you've been to school for 12 years and you still can't read, How in the world did you get the 12th grade? You'll have two witnesses know what I'm talking about. And you still can't read? You still can't write after 12 years of school? You would immediately say something's wrong here. If you've been in church since a baby, and now you're 50 years old and you're still a mess? Perhaps you've never been introduced. Who delivers me through who, church? Look at it. Through who? Our Lord. So then, I myself in my mind am a slave to whose law? but in my sinful nature, a slave to the law of sin. Now, this is where it gets dangerous. Since you've admitted this truth and understand this now, you need to understand you cannot trust in your nature. You can't trust yourself in no situation. Listen, I, I say it like this. Don't send the pastor to get the donuts for the brothers at the church. Don't send me. You shouldn't trust me around the corner at the donut shop. Because every time I go, I buy y'all stuff. And I get a little bag for me. So the brothers think I'm strong when I get back, Brother Paul. They say, Pastor, you want some donuts? Oh, no, I don't want none. <laughs> y'all know I can't have them. I ain't interested. Sugar dripping from my lip. What's that on your lip, Pastor? Oh, nothing, nothing. But I can't trust myself. I know I have weaknesses. My brothers, how many of you keenly aware of your weaknesses since you read the word of God? I can't depend on my own strength. So reading the word of God is vital for me. Staying near the church is important for me. I can't miss Wednesday night. I'm too weak for that kind of stuff. I can't miss Sundays. I'm too weak. I hope y'all understand what I'm saying. You've got to be honest because my sinful nature, pull that passage up, my sinful nature is a slave to the law of sin. I'll commit sin before I even realize it. Come on now. Because it's just me. I can't trust me. I have to stay with the word. Because, look at Romans 8 and 2. Because through Jesus Christ, the law of the spirit who gives life has set you free. Y'all reading your Bible? Check your own Bible. I, I might have made that up. Check it out. Check it out. Who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and eventual death. That is separation from. That word death simply means separated. When a physical person dies, their spirit has separated from their body and they leave us. We call it remains. Separation from God is eternal. You don't get another chance. Once you physically die and you have not united with God, you are totally, completely separated from God. But I've been set free from that. 
through the Spirit. We're studying the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is my buddy. The Holy Spirit is my friend. My best friend. He walks closer to me than anybody else can. He lives on the inside. He's there to guide me and to help me and to lead me in the right direction. But I got to trust my friend. Tell your neighbor you need to trust God. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he shall. Direct your path. He'll keep you out of trouble. He'll keep you on the right path. But you got to trust him. Look at uh, what uh, Reverend Bonner said. He said, while conversion calms one kind of storm, it raises another, which is to be lifelong. Now, this struggle I'm talking about is lifelong. When is it over, Rep? When you die. Other than that, your nature will never leave you alone. It will always want what it wants. I don't care. Listen to me, my father. Let me bring Pete Vonado back. Reverend Pete Vonado used to tell the men, the older men, don't let your nature mess you up. He said, an old man chasing after a young woman need to understand it's only in your mind. You're not even in tune with what your body is telling you. Come on now, let me help somebody. Young women, an old man only have a dirty mind. And a lot of young women know that. They say he got a dirty mind. I'm going to talk to that dirty man and get me some money. Do I have a witness in here? And these old men really think these young women like them. I was in line at Walmart, and uh, the young cashier was checking out, and the old man was standing there, and he was telling her, look, it's better that you have an old man. And she said, for what? I said, Miss, hurry up and check me out before, you, before he answer. And I have to stop and pull up a text. It's all! In your mind. It never ends. You let your nature fool you. I'm not talking about the flesh now. Your flesh trying to tell you, it's over. It's over. Hey, I don't do that no more. I'm done. Oh, you go to buy medicine? End up in an emergency? I ain't going to say no more, y'all know. Let's go to number six. The teaching for the believer. Now, I always say this because this is vital. I'm not talking to people who don't believe in Christ. I'm talking to those of you who have surrendered your life to the Lord. I'm talking to you. So there's some teaching for us. And, and Paul says here, you were what? Tall. With regard to your what? Farmer way. Farmer mean your old way, what you used to do. All right? The glory days. Like the young people, when you had it popping. <laughs> Only thing popping now is your knees, all right? That's the only thing popping. <laughs> but in your farmer day, 
My legs pop when I'm laying down. I ain't even moving them, they pop. <laughs> what was that? I'm like, Tim, you heard that? <laughs> Somebody in the house? No, that's your legs. <laughs> With regard to your family, to put off, tell your neighbor, put it off now. Put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful. A deceit is lie. Yeah. Those desires are not even real. Yeah. You can't even fulfill it. It's all in your mind. You making this up. Deceitful desires. Put that off. You're a Christian now. Put that on. It's deceiving you, leading you where you don't want to go. Listen at me, old men. I, I got to tell the truth now. Let that young girl fool you. Once she get in the wallet and the checking account, it ain't over. Now she going to call you next weekend and you with your wife and you trying to hide the phone number. Then she show up at your job. Uh -huh. And the other men said, Fred, who is that? I don't know that girl. <laughs> Fred, you know me. You better come out there. Don't have me come up there. Oh, Lord. Uh -huh. It leads you where you don't want to go. Yes, sir. Anybody been led where they didn't want to go? When you found out, you say, oh, Lord, get me out of this. The teaching is to put that away. That's the teaching to the believer. Get rid of it. Put it away. To be made new in the attitude. Show them that passage. Come on, 23. To be made new in the what? In your attitude. You got to get your attitude right. You got to get your mind right. The attitude of your minds and to put on what? The new self. Go on and be the new you. You're a Christian now. Act like a Christian. Walk like a Christian. Go to church like a Christian. Be here on time. Wave your hand in the air. Worship God. Pray at night. Go on and be the new you. Put on the new self. Created to be like not Reverend Vaughn, though. Be like who? In true righteousness and what else? Separated from this foolishness of the world. Get away from that. Get clean away from it. Because it's only deceiving you. Out to destroy you. Y'all with me? Number seven. So... Where do I stand today? Where do I stand? Let's read these 13 verses and we're going home. Therefore, there is now, tell your neighbor right now, no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. Now, those of you who've given your life to Christ, don't worry about your past sins. Listen to me. You're taken care of. Once you give your life to Christ, you are now on your way to heaven. Even in your weaknesses, the Holy Spirit will clean you up. He's working on you. That's why he had me preaching to you now. He's working on you right now. If you're not asleep. Look at verse 2. Because... Through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you, what? Free from the law of sin and eternal death. For what the law was powerless to do, all it did was make me feel bad. All it did was show me how terrible I was because it was weakened by the flesh our nature. I couldn't do it. Every time I read it, I fall short. 
God did it by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. Somebody had to pay for your sins. Your salvation is free for you, but it was not free for Christ. Christ had to pay what you were supposed to pay. He became a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live, who do not live, who do not live any longer according to the what? But we live now according to the what? That's how we live. I don't obey my nature no more. I know my nature is deceiving me. Every time I have those thoughts, I know it's a trick. Don't believe it. It's deceitful. It's trying to destroy me. And that's because I'm constantly reading and studying God's word. So I live according to the what now? Spirit. Those, we're not going to argue with you. Those who live according to the flesh, you know who you are, have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds set by way of what? Study, prayer, on what the spirit desires. So I don't need to argue with you. If your life is constantly falling apart, but I never see you at church, I never see you at Bible class or Sunday school, I know what the problem is. You have your mind set on the flesh. You just determined to continue to live the same old way. I don't care how many times I tell you, you need to study the word. You need to get in tune with the word of God. You need to grow closer to the Lord. You continue disobeying what you know the word says, but you want different results. Let me ask you something. No, y'all ask him. I'll stay out of trouble. Ask your neighbor, are you crazy? You're doing the same thing over and over that caused the problem, but you want a different result. Is that not Look at six. The mind governed by the flesh is eternal death. But the mind governed by the spirit is eternal life and what? Peace right now. I could have peace of mind. My mother shared with me, she said, when she was younger, she said, Friday nights come? She had to hit them. Come on, how many of y'all, some of y'all still hitting them. Some of you used to hit them. Friday night? Oh, come on, not a week over. Got her new outfit. Hey, got to go out there where the happenings at. But now, since she came to the Lord, Friday night come all at once. Mama at peace now. Yeah. Do I have a witness in here? Some of y'all still on the, what is he talking about? Friday night? Come on, Rab, it's Friday. Look at verse 7. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. That's where all that attitude come from. Somebody tell you, baby, you know, you need to stay home with your children. Look her here. First of all, you need to mind your own business. This, my life, and I'm going to live it the way I choose to live it. And now you know your pastor can tell me how to live my life. 
That's what's wrong with y'all over there, Pleasant Valley. Let me get on Facebook and tell y'all something. Somebody say, Reb, they hostile towards you. I say, nope, not me. They don't have no problem with me. Y'all reading that? The flesh is hostile. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh, y'all reading it or y'all nervous? Don't be nervous, now read it, go ahead. Cannot God know my heart. Me, you to tell me nothing. Me and the Lord, we got our own relationship. Cannot Please, God. You hostile, ain't you? Dare me to tell you something. I wish he would call me to the office. I'll tear the doors off that raggedy office thing. See, he don't know me like he think. Hostile. Ready to put them up. I'll slap you, Reverend Bonadou. Is your problem with me? You! Look at nine. Talking about you believers now. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the what, church? If, indeed now. Now, wait a minute. Some of y'all in here, but you ain't in here. Some of y'all here, but you ain't here. Because that's a big old word right there. If, if, indeed, the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. Is that simple enough? I mean, is that plain enough? So we're not talking about those of you who are pretending to be in here. So you don't understand. I don't need to follow you. If you have the spirit in you and you belong to Christ, the Spirit will tell you that lifestyle ain't pleasing to me. He will bother you. You need to stop doing that. Y'all know. Does anybody have the Spirit talking to them? Look at 10. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death, because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. Look at 13 now. For if, this is our text, you live according to the flesh, you're lost. Tell your neighbor, ask your neighbor, are you still lost? If you're still living now, this is your indicator. This is your proof. This is your evidence. If you're still living that same way, you hadn't met the Lord. For if you live according to the flesh, you will. You will die. See, there's, there's no compromise here. There's no middle ground here. When God saves you, he saves you completely. You will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will what, church? And that's talking about eternal life. You will live eternally. So when he saves you, the Spirit works on you. Everybody understand me? Oh, you won't stay the same. He will change you. He will make you what you're supposed to be 
by his word and by his spirit. Yes,